Some have called it a lifelong scavenger hunt. Others, Pokemon Go for adults. It's a little bit art. It's a little bit science. It's quiet time, and it's the beautiful noise of nature. It's birding, the observation of birds all around us. So we came here to the Harford Glen Environmental Education Center in Central Maryland to take you on a little flight of fancy into the world of birding. We got one, Amanda. Dennis Kirkwood is a former teacher and administrator in the Harford County Public Schools. He's been birding for over 40 years and remains as excited as ever about the hobby. I'm an outdoors person, so I do like to be outside. Uh, I think the thrill of the hunt when you're after birds that uh, uh, are hard to find, to me, it's also a very social event. You know, I usually like to bird with people so that you can share the experience. Dennis isn't alone in his passion. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, there are some 18 million active birders. Getting started is easy, and your own backyard is a great place to begin. A couple of feeders and some bird seed is all you need to attract new visitors. How about a Carolina chickadee, a woodpecker, or even a majestic red cardinal? Tell me about your, your rarest find, something that maybe even you're most proud of. Well, uh, my hat here yeah. has a Bullox Oriole on it. And the story behind that is uh, four winters ago at the feeder at my house, I looked out and saw this yellow, black, white bird. So uh, the bird stayed for 36 days and I had over 200 people come to see it because wow. it was only the third time ever it had been, had shown up in Maryland and it was the first time it stayed one place where people could come see it. Um, and that was very interesting, it was very exciting. Uh, it was so a star uh, for a little while. For a little while, <laughs> I was, uh, and, and still to this day, some people say, I saw your Bullock's Oreo. Is that right? And I said, yeah, I remember. The next step is to spread your wings beyond the backyard. Exploring local parks and hiking trails or front country, as birders call it, or even some exotic locale halfway around the world. But make no mistake, Maryland is a great place for birding. There are over 900 species of wild birds in North America, and throughout the year, about half will make their way through the free state. Oh, I see a, f is that a finch I see? What do I see there? Amanda Koss runs a middle school outdoor education program at Harford Glen. Her students use this shack or bird hide to identify birds, but they don't need a conventional field guide. Like most things in the modern age, there's an app for that. What the app does is it thinks what bird is in Bel Air on April 12th that's teeny tiny, that's black, gray, and white, and then it lists out all of your different choices. And if you remember what he looked like, do you remember which one he was? Yeah, I would have to say Carolina chickadee. Yeah, absolutely. He was the Carolina chickadee that was on the feeder. Dubbed the citizen science, birders often record sightings to global databases that help scientists track avian behavior and environmental health. Dennis has spotted over 2,500 species of birds spanning four continents and counting. First, you're, you're focused on the bird, but pretty soon when you're going to look for a certain bird, you know that they prefer the woodlands along a stream or they prefer a very dense forest uh, in the uplands. You realize that some birds are so specific in what they eat that uh, you're not gonna find them if you don't find the, the uh, prey source that they're after but it is another way that I connect to the environment and realize that uh, it's one great big circle of life, uh, to use a cliche. From the Arctic loon to the yellow-nosed albatross, from the Eurasian coot to the Baltimore Oriole, yes, there actually is a Baltimore Oriole. Birding can be done by anyone, anywhere. So why not take a break from the tweets and go experience some tweets? Because this is one activity that's not for the birds.